could be run out. With David and Jonathan is an international rugby star who's played first for New Zealand and then for Wales, making him the first person in history to actually choose to be Welsh. <laughs> Shane Howard. <laughs> With Gary and Rory is a comedian who was born in Virginia, brought up in North Carolina, and who didn't leave America until he was 38. He makes his debut for Wales next week. <laughs> Rich Hall. We get things underway with our excuses round. Gary, Rory and Rich, your subject is our very own Shane Howarth here. This is him scoring against Italy in the last of his 19 matches for Wales. Taylor, Howarth is through, Howarth is there. That's Wales' is fourth. It's also Shane Howarth's fourth for Wales. Now, tragically, Shane was recently banned from playing for Wales, but Gary's team, why? I'm pretty sure I have the answer to this. Good. Um, Shane's uh, grandfather was actually um, a Maori. Mm -hmm. Kalana Moalua Kia Ora. <laughs> and uh, came over to Wales during the great uh, vowel shortage of the 30s. <laughs> um, when they were just rooting around for anything. A's, E's, O's, travel tiles. I wish it were true. New Zealanders use all the vowels at once, don't they? And they put them into these horrible vowel crates and <laughs> ship them off to <laughs> ship them off to France where they're using words like adieu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, called, um, it's called irritable vowel syndrome. Right? <laughs> Do you actually speak Welsh, Shane? Yep. Go on then. Cardiff, Newport. <laughs> <laughs> it has to have something to do with, with being grandfathered in, so to speak. You can't ask him. Just <clears throat> give the answer to me, please. The answer is that Do we, um... I don't need this kind of pressure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe the answer is that uh, Shane's grandfather was uh, Welsh. And uh, then it turned out later that uh, his grandfather wasn't Welsh. I could play for the Republic of Ireland because I once had a fight in Kilburn. <laughs> and I could also, I could play soccer for Scotland because I'm crap. <laughs> But I think now it's even easier now. Now you can play rugby for Wales if you have either ever owned or listened to a Tom Jones album. That's all. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It's not unusual. No. It's not. Hey. <laughs> Rich, I'm going to give you the three points. Well done. Well done, Rich. Well done. Yes, the reason is that although Shane was born and brought up in New Zealand, he thought he qualified for Wales via his grandfather, Thomas Williams of Cardiff. However, according to New Zealand officials, his grandfather was actually Hare Matenga Papata from Aturu, north of Kaiataya. <laughs> Shane Howarth has now been replaced in the Wales team by Matt Cardi, who comes from a lot closer to home, Papakura, just outside Auckland. <laughs> The other players in the Welsh team were gutted when Shane was disqualified. Fly half, Daffid Llewellyn said, Struth, mate, that's a bit crook. <laughs> <laughs> David, Jonathan and Shane, it's football for you, that's soccer, Shane. And the moment when the USA won the last World Cup. This to win the World Cup. In comes Brandy Justin and scores! The United States have the victory, off comes her shirt. On comes the charge of all the other players, and the coach, Tony De Chico, joins in. It's hugs all round. Now, straight after winning the Women's World Cup, at the height of the team's success, the USA women's coach, Tony De Chico, suddenly decided he couldn't take any more and resigned. What, David's team, was his excuse? I've played with her. <laughs> oh, yeah? She was in Japan. She joined us in training occasionally. But you were unfit for three years in Japan. <laughs> yeah, but she was. 
Ladies' soccer, because it's called women's football. They prefer ladies' soccer, I believe. Mm -hmm. They've got very different, it's a very different game. They have different chants as well. They got one that goes, who made all the pies? Who made all the pies? <laughs> I must get this recipe. Who made all the pies? <laughs> They're lovely. You're going home in perfect safety. <laughs> very different game. They only shower after extra periods. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already sorry I said that. You know, <laughs> we're joking inside, and we are joking. Um, it must be, you know, for a captain of a, like a, a guys team, because when you're captain and you, what was the best time when you motivated your team? Did you do a speech? Did you? How did I you get them going before a game? He was captain of Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> There's no go. question of motivation. I used to go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> David, about, what about you for cricket? Is it similar? <laughs> Managers of but man for the really big games, I used to go, come on. <laughs> well, the best I can manage was, lads, we've won the toss. <laughs> you know what, I know he said he wanted to go off to spend more time with his family. I believe that's what he said. But I've always been very suspicious of that, because, frankly, some of us here have families, and let's face it, the last thing you actually want <laughs> is to spend any more bloody time with them, isn't it? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you three points for it. Yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, the answer is that DiCicco didn't want to be around all those women because he felt staying home with his wife would make him a better husband. He actually said, it's more important to me to be a world-class husband than a world-class coach. Or, in the case of Glenn Hoddle, neither. <laughs> the American team's biggest star is Mia Hamm, who inspired a footballing Barbie doll. In fact, in the 1980s, there was a short-lived Gary Lineker doll, but it was withdrawn from sale because you couldn't get it out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. Next up is our sporting bluff round, where the teams try to work out who on the other side is telling the truth and who is telling big fat fibs. David's team, your subject is a New Zealand-born rugby player who rather bizarrely plays for New Zealand, <laughs> Jonah Lomond. And here he is, scoring against England in the last World Cup. Three on two out wide, just got to Lomu. And he sees off Guscott. Healy through, he's gone through Healy as well, and the big man's done it again. So, Gary's team, what can you tell us about the world's fastest mountain, Rich? Uh, John Alomu has the world's biggest car stereo. Gary? He learnt his. Oh, do it with that looking, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Gary Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Have you seen the outtakes where he goes, welcome to match of the... <laughs> <laughs> Jonah Lomu holds the world record for the biggest feat of any sportsman. Jonah Lomu holds the world record for the biggest bath. Or bath if you're from the north. <coughs> or bath if you're a Manchester United supporter. <laughs> so, David's team, Jonah Lomu holds the world record for the loudest car stereo, biggest feat or the biggest bath. Shane, do they have baths in New Zealand or just dips? <laughs> Do you know all the words Beep to Mulder and Scully by Catatonia? <laughs> no, but I know Keris Matthews. Do you mean you know her, Noah, in the biblical sense? Or do you no, mean no, you I've just like her. on top of the pops? I admit her. But yeah. would you like to you know think... her, Shane? Is that what you're saying? No, no, I can't, because uh, my wife will watch the show. <laughs> what about the broadcast? I'll say it was on another day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell my wife Friday. Yeah, well, yeah she's nice. What a... <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I know Jonah quite well, and, uh... Yep. When you say know him quite well... <laughs> Where would you put Jonah and Keris from oh, Catatonia? Uh, Which one? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that it's his, his stereo. It, uh... No, don't go there yet. I want to talk about his feet. <laughs> his toenails are very much sought after by poachers. <laughs> he has got big feet. You can hear him coming from three streets away, which is a bit like when Rory leaves the window open. And then you hear the bleating of the farm animals begging for release. <laughs> Come on, you know the level we work at here. <laughs> but no, I think it's his, his stereo. He's, uh, he's bought a car stereo in New Zealand worth uh, 100,000 New Zealand dollars. Must be weird seeing a big stereo like that strapped on the back of his goat. 
What sort of music do you listen to in New Zealand? There's not a lot of music. What's the native music in New Zealand? I'm Welsh, Jonathan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Super furry animals. So, Shane, you think that Rich was I telling the truth? Yep, Let's see if you were correct. <laughs> Yes, indeed, Rich was correct. Jonah owns the world's noisiest car stereo, and here it is. That's a shaggin' wagon. <laughs> Sadly, recently, Jonah had his stereo broken into and his car nicked. <laughs> Now, Gary's team, your subject is the recently sacked Wraith Rovers manager, John McVeigh. That's Wraith Rovers, Jonathan. Here's a typical moment. <laughs> Here's a typical moment from a Wraith game as they take the lead against Bayern Munich. Danny Lennon to take the free kick, and it's deflected, and Oliver Kahn is left flat-footed. Amazing! Wraith Rovers lead Bayern Munich in the Olympic Stadium. Now, John McVeigh was fired by Wraith Rovers recently for a rather strange reason. David's team? Uh, Wraith's manager was sacked for spending too much time with celebrity crimper Vidal Sassoon. A Wraith's manager was sacked for spending too much time with Hollywood actor Robert Duval. Wraith's manager was sacked for... <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it, I'm Welsh. <laughs> Wraith's manager was sacked for spending too much time with world chess champion Gary Kasparov. So, was Vidal Sassoon, Robert Duval or Gary Kasparov instrumental in John McVeigh's <laughs> fall from the Olympian heights of the Wraith job? Gary's team. Am I not the only one here? <laughs> Hold on, are you not the only one here? The socio-economic irony of the Rovers versus Munich. Rovers, once being a proud British trademark of manufacturing, <laughs> Munich being the home of BMW, which now, through greedy, corporate, cynical capitalism, has taken jobs from Rover's workers, <laughs> made their lives miserable, and all we have to see is a wistful piece of nostalgia showing Rover once being triumphant, when in fact it is the opposite. And anyone who says that football is not a metaphor for life well, here's your proof, my friend. Here's your proof. <laughs> it had to be said. And people wonder why Americans shoot each other. <laughs> Good to have an American accent. Can, oh. you do a, can you do a New Zealand accent? Yeah. <laughs> Scottish chess. No, unlikely. Gary oh, yeah, he's the chess player, Gary. Yes, he played that eight-eight formation with the big pieces up front. <laughs> <laughs> Robert De has done a lot of filming in Scotland, hasn't he? If they were to make a movie up there, they could call it the Gripes of Wraith. <laughs> <laughs> or even the Gripes of Wraith. <laughs> so you think Robert, Robert De Val? So you think that David was telling the truth? Let's what? see if you're right. <laughs> Yes, it was David that was correct. McVeigh did indeed spend all his time hanging out with actor Robert Duval. Duval was in Scotland playing a football manager in the film The Cup, with McVeigh playing his assistant. Although the film hasn't been released yet, it was Scotland's entry into this year's Cannes Film Festival. Unfortunately, it was trounced by a Guatemalan film <laughs> and then put up a brave fight against a Brazilian film when it was too late. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team <coughs> have six points. Oh. Next up, we play a pair of goal celebrations and ask what they could possibly mean. David's team, yours is a premiership goal for Watford to remember on those cold nights at Crewe and Grimsby next season. Positive play by Vuta, taking them on, and he's found the gap, and Smart takes over and scores for Watford. He claims the credit, but much of it should go to Vuta. So, that was Alan Smart scoring in the one-all draw with Spurs, but why the pose? Was that from this weekend? No. It wasn't. When was it from? Next weekend. Because <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't watching this weekend, it was the Grand Prix. I was watching some of the most exciting, dangerous, 
remarkable car park driving I've ever seen them. <laughs> sponsored by a deodorant firm or something. Just... You need to be. <laughs> You've got a pair, just have a look. You've got a pair. Hey! Tiger. Sorry, Nick. You should see him after the show. He wrings his pants out in the sink in the wardrobe. <laughs> but Please. they're going down, aren't they? Watford are going down. As soon as Elton heard they were going down, he was first in the queue, I'm telling you. <laughs> are you with me? <laughs> the new presenter of Highway, ladies and gentlemen. What a shot putter, is he in the spare time? Nope. No. Who's that That's kid? That's not too bad. Yeah. I'm tempted to go. There's out. a little, no, there's a kid down there wearing a, a horrible Ga Gary Lineker mask. Look behind him there, look at that. <laughs> Has Halloween come early? <laughs> You've started a trend. It's bigger than Pokemon, you are. <laughs> Even that big eared one. <laughs> Swap him. Swap me two Pikachu for a Lineker. <laughs> shot putting, I might give you a point for, but it's not enough for three points. Shot putting, he's uh, shot putting, he's putting the shot. Brilliant. That doesn't really add, does it? <laughs> Can I just ask, though, has he got a lazy lob on there, or is that the way those shorts are hanging? <laughs> is that a Watford requirement as well? <laughs> Elton likes them semi-erect during the match. It's all to do with Alan Smart's Scottish heritage, as he explains. Being a Scotsman, uh, I eat my porridge, um, and I noticed on the box there's a shot putter on the box. So I decided the next time I score a goal, I was going to impersonate the shot putter. Funnily enough, the Watford dietitian encourages the players to eat cereal because it makes them crap. And it certainly works. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no rest for some of the Watford squad with Euro 2000 coming up. Well, those hamburgers don't cook themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team, we take you back to this year's boat race day and the meeting of Oxford and Cambridge. Puddles everywhere, conditions more in keeping with the boat race. And that's a bit short from Whelan and in nips John Hansen. And Cambridge lead Oxford by two goals to nil. Any Cambridge people in tonight? Hey. Oh, good, get left home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Best bacon sandwich in the league as well, Cambridge United. It's true. Best trophy cabinet. Best trophy cabinet. Empty trophy cabinet. <laughs> the Rory McGrath. Yeah, the Rory McGrath trophy cabinet. Trophy cabinet. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Because it's big, fat and empty. <laughs> And they named the toilet after Gary. <laughs> it's full of shit. <laughs> Perhaps they were being controlled by a, uh, a giant puppeteer <laughs> who was just moving them like marionettes. That's their closest yet. That's is it close? Is it something to do with television? Yes. Is it a bad Morecambe and Wise impression? Can no, that was Gary. Some of the comedy type programs. Possibly. Ish. Is it, um, it's, like, it's like the Ali G type sort of, you know. It's correct for three points, yes. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst <laughs> Ali G <laughs> I've ever seen. Here are Mark Joseph and friends to tell us the reason. Before the Oxford game, me and my boys were watching my main <laughs> man, Ali G, and we thought to show him some respect, we'd do a little dance for him. Take it away, boys. Respect. I. 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 Cambridge United always do a celebration based on the comedian of the day. The last time they scored, it was Abbott and Costello. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have seven, and Gary's team have nine. It's time once again for our regulars to grope a sporting great as we play Feel the Sportsman. David and Jonathan, you're first this week. I've lost a popper. Pavlo. <laughs> Can you put a little caption on the show apologising for my badly turned out appearances? Yes, right? definitely. <laughs> it's like, new, you know, newcomers to the country, Romanians and Bosnians, they tune in just to see me for a bit of glamour. <laughs> for them, me in a suit is like a year's holiday. <laughs> you still got those Bosnian children you bought to work on your estate? Yep. <laughs> Can we have yeah. our first mystery guest, please? Yeah. 
You may start. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's Ang and Chang, the conjoined twins. <laughs> We've got two blokes on this side. Who have you got? I don't know, but... <laughs> I've lost my sense of direction. <laughs> That's the desk I have. Do they go down forever? Oh. <laughs> no, no, it's me. Is it? no, it's... <laughs> I thought it felt a bit greasy. <laughs> what did you put on there? Greasy oh, 2000 or something? <laughs> you still using that road game? No, it's that colour fast. Not stuff, working. It? How many people are here? There's loads of them. It's like a party. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, there's a high-pitched giggle which leads me to believe not all of these Oi, people are male. We <laughs> uh, God, you know a bit, don't you? Have <laughs> we found any Is this balls? you, David? Have you found any balls? <laughs> Try to blow you, David. Not David, we're here. Is it Joe Lomo? <laughs> Is this the top eight Wimbledon I'll tell you seeds? what, though, this takes me back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lady. Time's uh, running out. Is this some ladies? <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> I, tell you, I can't believe you've got a load of leather action. I can't even see it. <laughs> Can I have a tape of this afterwards? <laughs> it's me, this one. <laughs> one of them's trapped. One of them's trapped. Get us St John's ambulance. One of them's trapped down there. <laughs> Just hang He's on. Back. Help is on the way. <laughs> Saracens, ladies, seven sites. Well, well congratulations. I'm <laughs> sorry, I could store that up for later use, that experience. <laughs> OK, Gary and Rory, <laughs> you'd like to take your positions? <laughs> you haven't got a moist towelette I could use. <laughs> Can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> All may not be as it seems. Huh? What? Nothing. All? 90 seconds start now. All may not be as it Ooh, seems. Oh, Rory, it's another girl. <laughs> All may not be <laughs> as it seems. Ooh. <laughs> Reckon it girl? Fine breasts. <laughs> Blimey. It's a, ver <laughs> it's a very strong girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's a man, Gary. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's Gross. Virginia Wade, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Another Welsh player. Maybe. Welsh. Another sort of Welsh player. Another Welsh player. What's the name of the bloke who was mentioned on the show earlier on? <laughs> I know, I was trying to think. <laughs> what? It's Cardi. Cardi. Yeah, first name? Matt. Matt Cardi. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. I've seen him somewhere before. Yeah. You know, in reception you... when I walked in today. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team has seven points and Gary's team has twelve. <laughs> we end as we always do with the name game. The leaders go first, which is in fact Gary's team today. As many clues as you can get correct in the next 90 seconds. Pass this on to Rory, please. And your time starts now. Um, Watford manager, do I not like that? Um, Graham Taylor. Very good Bless indeed. You. you can speak up as well, oh, Richie. thank you. This is a very young uh, Formula One uh, driver whose second name sounds like... Oh, Jensen Button. Sounds just like that, yeah. Very good indeed. <laughs> Feel free to join in there, Richard. Right. Uh, this is an American football coach. Andrew McClarty. <laughs> no, go on. I think he's coming a bit later on. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the... Highest is award he? a civilian can get. He is as well. <laughs> is he? Uh, oh. The highest uh, award a civilian can get in this country. Well, right. George, George Cross. Yeah, George Cross. Good. 
Oh, this is, <laughs> this is a South African golfer. He's first. Andrew name... McLarty. Very good. <laughs> I don't know Andrew McCloy. Uh, this is apparently a baseball commissioner. <laughs> That's an American sport. Um, Bud Selling. No, hang on. First name is what the uh, one of the seven dwarfs. One that was healthy. gay. <laughs> happy. Happy. Uh, yeah, happy. Happy. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. Happy. And happy the, se the second, the second, yes, the, the second got name. Got it. Uh, yeah. Well done, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew McClarty, then. <laughs> yeah. Rich, where did that come from? Uh, it's the only name that I memorized from the uh, British Book of <laughs> Encyclopedia of Sports <laughs> of South Africa. Answer the question! <laughs> Nick, I think Gary's already admitted. Did you see my card over here? No. <laughs> well, Nick, Gary already admitted he saw the ginger bloke in the, in the reception earlier. Yeah. yeah. Rich oh, has been up to no good. I think you've got to give us a few more points and take some away from them. I tell you, well, you see, because this audience, look, these audience are telling you, they're really nice people, I can tell. <laughs> and you're who, letting them down. Who would you consider, Jonathan, to be the finest football team the world has ever seen? I would say, without any doubt, that had to be Stoke City. OK, I'm going to take three points off. <laughs> oh, okay. For cheating. OK, so that takes it you down... It came to me in a dream. <laughs> So you're down to 14, so eight will win it for you, John. <laughs> Easy! <laughs> this is our strongest no round. <laughs> you're 90 seconds. Traditionally, this is our best. Start now. Uh, the captain of uh, Manchester United. Roy second. Keane. Yeah. Roy Keane. Okay. Uh, New that. Zealand rugby player, big bloke. We were talking about him earlier. Built like a ring. Okay. There you go. All right. Uh, second name is the man's name. It's also the name of a vacuum cleaner that I've got at home. <laughs> you know, the vacuum cleaner with the smiley face on, not the Dyson. The Dyson's meant to be Who's very, that? very good. Use a totally different <laughs> vacuum suction method. I don't know if it's the better or not. This one has got the little face, a little red fella. I've got one as well. Yeah, he's got one as well. Do you know it? You must have one on your stage somewhere. It's a vacuum cleaner and it's got a smile on its face. Everyone knows it. We've got one called a Vorvo. It's very good because it's electrolytic. No! All right. If you're a post bloke, you would be a hooray. Henry. Hey, okay. The first name is. a vacuum cleaner called Henry for Graham. William Shatter. It's the name of a very popular brand of vacuum cleaner. You said it. Yeah, Graham Henry. I'll talk to you later. Okay. She's a soccer player. We were talking about earlier. She took a top off. That's it. Okay. Oh, if you went to see a lady, maybe you're on holiday in Thailand, you say, if you wanted to go down on you, you would give her cash. You would say, I will give you the. Yeah, you're close. That's in it. Sucky's there. Oh, it's got Sucky. And then what would you call your, the thingamajig if you were talking to a No, but you're a, a ball, you're being polite, you're going, would you suck in my... What? Right? No, no, what would you say? So oh. Big Ben goes, ding, oh, that's it. <laughs> and also, when you give someone cash, you... What do you do to them? Hey, you pay, pay, don't suck. There you go. <laughs> yeah, well done. I was doing... I was doing... A child was trying. That might be what happened. Yeah, there you go. Well so done. So David's team have 12 points, but the winners are Gary's <laughs> team with 14. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Shane, Gary, Rory and Rich, we're all off to celebrate Man United's glorious single-winning season. My name's Nick Hasbrock. If you think it's all over, it is now. If you would like to test your knowledge of Hancock, then press red now and examine yourself, Sky Digger. Blah, 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 viewer. Take the Nick quiz. It's ready and waiting. Of course... If you are not Nick or his mother, simply relax and wait for double take after this and these. UK